A very good evening and welcome to the news at 7. I'm Mazen Lansari. We begin with the headlines. The Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense visits the headquarters of the 25th Commando Brigade. Israel intensifies its bombardment of Gaza and warns of a long conflict ahead. The European Union is set to back new sanctions against Russia over the conflict in Ukraine. And despite all the tension, Muslims throughout the globe celebrate the advent of Eid al-Fatr holidays. Starting with local news, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Sheikh Khaled al-Jarrah al-Sabah, paid a visit today to the headquarters of the 25th Commando Brigade on the advent of Eid al-Fatr holiday. In a press statement, the Defense Ministry's Moral Guidance Department said that Sheikh Khaled was accompanied by the Army Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Mohammed al Uthman, and several senior leaders of the armed forces. The minister conveyed Eid al Fatr greetings of His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Sabah al Ahmed al Jabr al Sabah, His Highness the Deputy Emir and Crown Prince, Sheikh Nawaf al Ahmed al Jabr al Sabah, and His Highness Sheikh Jabr al Mbarak al Hamad al Sabah, the Prime Minister to the Kuwaiti Armed Forces, and hailed the efforts of the brigade's leaders and personnel in enhancing its efficiency and readiness to defend the homeland. Moving on to international news. In the Gaza Strip, flames continue to engulf Gaza's only power plant today, several hours after two Israeli tank shells hit one of the three fuel tanks at the facility. Officials at the power plant said that 15 workers were trapped inside the facility and that the damage would take months to repair. The bombing came after a night of continuous Israeli strikes which hit the home of the top Hamas leader in Gaza, Ismail Haniyeh, as well as government offices and the headquarters of the Hamas satellite television station. Meanwhile, hundreds of mourners gathered in Khan Yunus and Rafah, carrying the bodies of Gaza residents killed by the Israeli airstrikes. Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei accused Israel of committing genocide for its continued strikes on the Gaza Strip and called on the Muslim world to arm the Palestinians. The call by Khamenei was his latest such message during the ongoing war between Gaza's Hamas rulers and Israel. The remarks came after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu signaled that Israel is intensifying its air and ground campaign. For its part, Hamas said it will not stop fighting until it wins international guarantees that a seven-year-old border blockade of Gaza will be lifted. In Libya, a fighter jet engaged in paramilitary attacks on terrorists in the rest of eastern city of Benghazi crashed and exploded today after its pilot safely ejected. It was not immediately clear if the plane was shot down or crashed due, it to, due to a malfunction as a massive blaze continued to rage at a fuel depot near Tripoli's crippled airport. Two weeks of fighting between militias for control of Tripoli Airport and between fighters and a former general in Benghazi has killed scores of people and prompted several countries to urge their citizens to leave Libya. A suicide bomber has killed a powerful cousin of outgoing Afghan President Hamid Karzai today, a major blow to the country's ruling clan that risks destabilizing the volatile South. 
Hashmat Karzai was in his home outside Kandahar city greeting visitors on the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Fitr when the blast took place. According to local officials, the attacker, a man in his 20s who hid the explosives inside his headgear, was allowed into the house as a guest. In the attack, Hashmat Karzai and a bodyguard were killed on the spot. Hashmat Karzai was one of the most influential power brokers in Kandahar province and a key ally of presidential frontrunner Ashraf Ghani. Shelling in at least three cities in eastern Ukraine has hit a home for the elderly, a school and multiple homes today, adding to a rapidly growing civilian death toll, with the death of 17 people, including three children, in Horlivka city. The use of unguided rockets in fighting between government troops and pro-Russian separatist rebels has been causing a notable increase in casualties in recent days and drawn criticism from the United Nations and other human rights groups. And with turmoil raging across a swath of Ukraine's troubled east, international investigators were again prevented today from visiting the site of the Malaysian Airlines jet shut down earlier this month. Meanwhile, with new resolve, leaders of the European Union prepare today to approve an array of more rigorous sanctions designed to punish Russia for supporting the separatists battling government forces in eastern Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said the United States and India had reached a potentially transformative movement in their relationship. As bilateral relations were strained last year over the arrest of an Indian diplomat in New York, Kerry said that the U.S. could help the Indian government deliver reforms and economic growth, urging India to ease restrictions on trade and investments and work with the U.S. in fighting climate change. Kerry was speaking in Washington, D.C., ahead of the U.S.-India strategic dialogue he will attend in New Delhi later this week, marking the first session of the annual talks to be held under India's new government. A Kosovo official said the country will continue to cooperate with the European Union-run court that is probing top Kosovo leaders suspected of war crimes. Ardian Arifaj, advisor to Kosovo's prime minister, said today that authorities hoped for more clarity regarding the ongoing investigation that has gone into its third year and will likely not conclude for at least another year. A special EU prosecutor said there were compelling indications that up to 10 captives were killed to have their organs harvested for illegal trafficking during the 1998 to 1999 Kosovo War. However, American prosecutor Clint Williamson said today that the level of evidence was not yet sufficient to prosecute the alleged crimes as being complicated, difficult one. And again, we, this is why we remain open for further co cooperation in the future. Officials in the U.S. state of California said that at a relentless air assault helped limit the spread of a wildfire that has burned through more than four square miles of bush and trees in the Yosemite National Park and sent smoke into the valley. Firefighters were seen digging fire lines and cutting the, the trees down, hoping to stop the fire from spreading further into the area. According to authorities, an estimated 100 homes in the town of Foresta and the small community of Old El Portal were evacuated shortly after the fire began on Saturday. Despite all the tension, many Muslims throughout Asia and other parts of the globe celebrated the second day of Eid al-Fitr today 
while for others it was the first day of Eid celebrations, gathering in mosques to offer special Eid prayers. In Beijing, about a thousand men flocked into the city's biggest mosque on Niyu Street for the Eid ceremony, while in the Pakistani capital Karachi and in, in Dhaka in Bangladesh, a special prayer was offered for the protection of Palestinian people. After prayers, people could be seen congratulating and hugging each other on the occasion. Parents were buying gifts and colorful balloons for children as part of Eid traditional festivities. And finally, many parts of Kuwait were busy preparing for the Eid al-Fitr holiday even before the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Some companies around Kuwait offered special deals and sales, while others prepared entertainment programs for those who look for holiday diversions and enjoyment. Reporter Badria Saleh learned how one theater was spreading the word ahead of the Eid festivities. Here's her. With the Eid holiday nearing quickly, a multitude of companies and entertainment sources are eagerly awaiting the day that they can release to the public the fruits of their labor during the holy fasting month of Ramadan. We have a press conference for our play. It's about a group of uh, tourists that go and travel to Europe and they get like hustled kind of by the like the tour, what's it called? Travel. Tra travel agency so like yeah so yeah they get hustled by the travel agency and uh, they they live in a really like trashy hotel and like they go through a lot of problems and stuff like that <laughs> our show it's uh, talking about uh, people they come uh, with the person they call him uh, Bukhali. Uh, he, tell, he told us in Kuwait, I will do everything for you. He told me I will uh, let you go to the college, I will let you happy. When I come, I don't see anything from him. He is just talking and he is a liar uh, about us. This particular comedic strip is seeking to attract an open audience, from the young and the old, families to those flying solo, to welcome the long-awaited holiday through the means of humor and, hopefully, plenty of laughs. From new restaurant releases to upcoming plays and concerts, the extended Eid holiday will warrant a variety of matter, lingering and vying for your consumer attention. At the Salmiya Sports Club Theater, this is Badria Saleh reporting for the English News. Thank you, Badria, for that report. And for a chance to see our reports once again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Great News. This brings us to the conclusion of the evening news. Thank you for watching. Before we go, we remind you once again of tonight's headlines. Good night. The Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense visits the headquarters of the 25th Commando Brigade. Israel intensifies its bombardment of Gaza and warns of a long conflict ahead. The European Union is set to back new sanctions against Russia over the conflict in Ukraine. And despite all the tension, Muslims throughout the globe celebrate the advent of Eid al-Fatr holiday.